Magic Light Probes is a Unity asset that automatically places light probes in a Unity scene. I already covered light probes in a previous video linked in the description. If you don't know if you want this asset yet, you can watch the video to find out. Even if you know you don't want it, you still might learn some things about light probes. If you do want the asset, I have an affiliate link in the description to help support the channel at no additional cost to you. TLDR. Light probes are used on dynamic objects that cannot support light mapping because of their non-static nature. This would include players, NPCs, and physics objects. However, manually placing light probes gets incredibly tedious, and they are needed in nearly every Unity scene with high-quality lighting to make the dynamic objects blend in with the static ones, even if you are using mixed lighting or real-time global illumination. By the way, real-time global illumination will update light probes in addition to real-time light maps to make the lighting of the whole scene look cohesive. As always, don't forget to look at the documentation, both Unities for light probes and then Magic Light Probes for this asset. So both don't really go super in-depth, but still contain useful information. And remember that you can always look up any given component's documentation just by going up here and clicking the question mark. And thankfully, uh, not every uh, Unity asset supports doing that. So thank the creator for actually making this button work in their custom component. So let's get right into it. So I already showed you uh, at the beginning this video here, which kind of shows it off, shows off the ease at which light probes can be created and then the result of that. So on the left here, you have no light probes and obviously the indirect lighting or any lighting not coming from any real-time light source which typically you're not going to have a ton at least in any forward rendering scene you see that this character doesn't look realistically shaded at all as opposed to this character looks far more realistically shaded even in this scene right here where there is direct lighting you know there's not direct in on the back there's you know no indirect lighting and that obviously looks incredibly unrealistic and not super believable so here is theme that i'll be working with in this tutorial looks very familiar if you followed one of my other tutorial series but as you can see uh most of the objects in the scene are static except for this one this actually belongs in here except for this one this is a dynamic object and as you can see well it's receiving direct lighting from the window there but it's still the back of it is lit up blue like the sky when it should be uh more of this uh wooden color tint that the rest of the room is illuminated in and well you need light probes to do that so Let's go and start out and make a uh, Magic Light Probes volume. So what you're going to do first is go to Tools, Magic Light Probes, or Magic Tools, Magic Light Probes, and then MLP Manager, and you will get a pop-up window like that. I'm just going to dock it over here. And this first button is the Volumes Generator, or Generation. And I'm just going to add a volume, and it adds its Magic Tools, the drop down, the magic light probes, and then our MLP group, which is one of the volumes that we have. So make sure you have gizmos enabled. And uh, first thing we need to do is simply resize the volume. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the transform. So it's in the middle here, drag it up. And then uh, when resizing volumes, what I like to do is go into orthographic mode like that. So that's just this gizmo right here, and then the F key, Alt, and then right click to zoom out, or just, you know, the mouse wheel. And then edit volume bounds. You can do, uh, you can just left click, you must shift left click, or you can hold Alt and left click. And I find that to be the most convenient. So, there. And then just go to the other side, Alt, Easy. So we just now have a 
volume that encapsulates the part of the scene that we want there to be light probes in. And there's uh, something else here. Oh, there's an error here. We need to specify the bottom. Well, actually, what we can do is we can just go grab uh, one of these default settings assets, load that in, and then that checks the use volume bottom for us. The other thing we want is uh, if you're doing a VRChat world, these collision detection layers essentially checks for the collision boxes so it doesn't, there aren't any light probes contained within geometry because when you have that, then you get lighting errors, which you don't want, obviously. You also have to include the walkthrough layer if you're using VRChat. Otherwise, the default layer and then any other layer that you have static objects on that are being used in the uh, light mapping calculation. You don't want those to be, you don't want any light probes to be inside of any geometry. Okay, that's about it uh, that we need to do for the most basic setup for magic light probes. So we can just go to calculate probes volume, save the scene, and in no time, it just calculated where all the light probe placements were for us. So you, uh, do any of you remember setting up light probes before? Because the traditional way is just to go to light probe group and then to individually go to edit light probes and then like add probe and you add another one or to select one and then press control D to duplicate, select multiple, press control D to duplicate. It's so tedious and this makes it so much easier to just make the light probes for us. So here we have the light probe group and we can increase the gizmo size there so you can see them easier and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebake the lighting and we are going to see this capsule appear uh, more accurately shaded. I'm bake the lighting and wow <laughs> look at the difference there it's huge and so now you can see the indirect shading of the capsule is much more properly lit and shaded. But if you go over here, you can see that if you turn off gizmos and then turn off selection outline, you don't have the uh, light probe web being shown, which I'd recommend doing when trying to look at how good the lighting is because most players or every player isn't going to see uh, the light probe network like you are. You can see here it's pretty consistent except for there there's like a little little bit of a flash which you don't want and then uh, if you move it around here you might be able to see like some other yep that's a problem there so it's getting the light probe from the outside too darn bright but yeah there's a there's a white light probe or white yeah light probe right there that it's getting a lot of uh, the lighting from, a lot of its lighting data from, which you don't want, obviously. And then you can see there's, there's a bit of uh, inconsistency, or not inconsistency, but some jarring transitions between uh, different sections of lighting here. So what else do we want to do? Well, we're simply using the simple mode, and we can use the advanced mode. And as these two parts here say, simple mode doesn't take into account light sources, while the advanced mode does. So the most important thing with the advanced mode is that you need to add an MLP light component to every light source that needs to be taken into account. So we have one light source here, the directional light. And while you could simply say you could add a MLP light component right there, you can also go into the MLP manager right here, and then there's the lights and just add a light component for you and it will set it up uh, correctly automatically. Although it will also set it up um, correctly if you just type in and add it this way. So we added our light component and remember, this is what the light probe group looked like beforehand. By the way, you can also do, um, you can uh, fill, unlit, or excuse me, you can use these quick settings to change some of the parameters on the fly, although we can't use this one right now because we didn't select it before. 
But anyway, we have advanced. And uh, let's uncheck this one. It's not all that useful all the time. And simply calculate the probe's volume again. So uh, as you can see here, there are now uh, probes all throughout this whole volume here. So if you can imagine there being like volumetric lighting, then there would be, well, um, there you would need this whole volume right here, this uh, like triangular, <laughs> like extruded triangle, right? This entire part filled. And so one of the things you need to do to get that is to set the directional light to baked so as you can see, there's real time light and shadow on here. But if we bake the lighting again, there isn't any more. But we now have more proper illumination. We now have more proper illumination through uh, the light probes themselves. Again, you know, you don't need to uh, make sure that it's perfect just acceptable enough to blend in with the environment. But as you can see here, the lighting is now much more consistent with the more accurate, uh, excuse me, advanced mode. And that means that there'll be less uh, glitches or awkwardness regarding the light probes and objects lit by them. So that's so much easier and having to manually place all those probes yourself, it would have probably taken me, um, I don't even know how long to, you know, place all of these individually, right? Like dozens and dozens of minutes, if not a little under an hour. And that's just for a very small interior. So you can imagine how much this, t the importance and the convenience of this tool scales as you make larger environments. Speaking of larger environments, these honestly haven't really helped me, so I haven't really used them because whenever I do use them, I get like zero probes, zero light probes that are baked. But you can always create your own. You can just duplicate this one, control D, and then uh, save it and load it as you please, right? So you can load it right there. But uh, it, sometimes this doesn't place all the probes you want. And if you do want more probes, you can simply uh, either make your own uh, light probe group and then they will be added to uh, the huge light probe web that Uni ultimately, ultimately calculates or you could simply place custom probes yourself. So what happens is if you press go into the combined volume, click set custom probes, you can right click and you can still middle click and uh, alt, uh, you'd all click last time, all right click. But yeah, you can just place probes that way if you need to. So you get the benefits of the automatic calculation and then uh, more convenient manual probe placing when you need it. And honestly, yeah, you should uh, make sure that they're like some distance above the, uh, uh, above the uh, ground or from geometry there. And set those, make sure to press set them when you're done. The other thing that I wanted to show was the use volume bottom. Sometimes you don't have a very convenient flat bottom. The bottom is essentially, you don't want any light probes to be placed under these objects. Because if they did, like the player can't go under those objects or any dynamic objects can't go under those objects. So it's not only useless to place them there, but it also makes it so that uh, there might be lighting errors. And so you can simply just unclick that. And when you lock that inspector, you can click on these objects that you want to be the floor there. And that's how you do that. It's not very hard. The last thing is the quick editing, which I'll go back to. And here is you can edit some of these parameters really quickly. Well, it's obviously called quick editing. So for example, this unlit volume, you can fill that. So, and you can also space them further apart like that. 
I'm not sure if that part is actually working right now. But as you can see, the filling clearly is. And if you have less filling, that's more efficient. But sometimes you do want more accuracy so you can fill these uh, unlit parts or parts where it's it didn't the program automatically considered less important to fill. So it's up to you to do that. But typically this will work more than fine and is certainly uh, much more convenient than having to place uh, these light probes yourself. And then also remember that uh, Magic Light Probes comes with plenty of example scenes that you can test out for yourself. So I, I would have showed these, but I didn't really feel it necessary to do so, and also would have made the video longer. But you can check out if you want an indoor scene, a large scene. I already kind of covered an indoor scene here. There's one with the terrains, quick starting. And I know I didn't cover like uh, some of these, but like, a lot of these options aren't super important, except for this one might be useful. It's if you need to uh, prevent light, like from, for example, like when you go over here, remember when it was like really bright earlier, you run an additional algorithm to make sure that it tries uh, not to have any kind of light leaking there. The other thing is optimized for mixed lighting which we can just go into the um, documentation here. And under this recommendations to use, it'll show here is uh, the regular um, no optimization in that part. Optimized for mixed lighting is off. And then here's optimized with mixed lighting on. You can see that there's some uh, sub volumes up here at the top that are removed says nearly half of the volume is removed, half the subvolumes, because uh, with mixed lighting, it simply removes geometry that doesn't contain, or simply removes subvolumes that don't contain any geometry. So a reason that you might uh, want this off is if you're just using uh, all baked lighting like this. And for example, you might have a light source in a subvolume where there is no geometry, and in that case, you would want light probes there. However, if you don't have any light sources that are in places where there isn't geometry, then you may very well be able to turn on this optimization and use it for completely baked lighting too. And honestly, most players probably aren't going to tell be able to tell the difference. Uh, call by color. Uh, this one is in the quick editing as well it's the color threshold so when you turn this up more colors are considered equivalent but you turn it down and it can give a greater nuance in uh, the colors that are uh, used for the light probes so as you can see there's like some soft and faint transitions here I would consider important for high quality lighting, but if you don't need them, then you can simply get rid of them. I apologize that this video was um, somewhat uh, unorganized as it's kind of difficult to know, like to just cover these in a really super uh, well thought out sequence just because there's a lot of different tools available here. But hopefully this helped you out. Remember, always look at the documentation, both for Unity uh, and for whatever asset or just in general, any program that you're using. And if you um, want this asset, remember, you can buy it from the link in the description and support me. It would really help. and I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And a huge thanks to my patrons as always. Bye.